Razaban if I have all TV proudly sponsored by Everlast. I'm delighted to have with me on Zoom today uh, my man Eric Molina. Eric, firstly, how are we doing? I am great, man. Uh, just enjoying a beautiful day out in South Texas, man. I'm about to head out to the gym right now and do some work. I'm good. Good to hear, good to hear. Eric, last time we spoke was uh, I think a week or so, or maybe slightly longer, 10 days after your trip to Gibraltar. Obviously, it wasn't a successful one. Um, obviously, we spoke about that particular event in our last interview, but what have you been up to since? You know what? I've been uh, back at work, just like at every fight. Come back, get back to work. And uh, I've been in the gym, been in like an off-season type of weight training and just a little bit of cardio. A couple of weeks ago, or actually uh, last week, we started uh, kind of get linking up with my training team and start starting to get some boxing work in and, and start trying to get some rhythm of uh, my boxing training. And, and uh, try and move forward into uh, another fight. I know we spoke slightly, uh, a little bit off camera there, we were talking about um, just getting yourself back in the mode of boxing as well. Uh, right. What's Eric Molina got left? You know what, man? I, it's, it's, it, for me, it's something that, that I ask myself every day. You know, at 39 years old in the sport, um, I, I, I'm always looking to tweak. I, as I started late in the game, I started at 23 years old. So it's something that I learned every day in the sport. Uh, just trying to keep myself healthy, as healthy as I can be, and things that I eat, the things I consume, so, you know, trying not to drink every day, and just trying to, to make the right decisions, because if I choose to fight, these are elements that are very important, and just trying to line up these things into my lifestyle, so that I can go out there and, and perform against, with, against some of these uh, young, young heavyweights around the world still. Any any good news about any shares invested into Dunkin' Donuts? <laughs> Not yet, man. Uh, a lot of times that's my day, man. I go to the gym, I go to work, and uh, pick up a cup of coffee and here and there, and, and that's my day. It is what it is. And like I said, you know, I, I love I love being in the gym. And if I'm not in the gym boxing and I'm not working, this I really don't know what I'd be doing every day. So it's kind of like. Uh, you know, I kind of feel like boxing is just a big part of my life and I'm not ready to walk away from it yet. And also gives you that good, it's a good routine to have, isn't it? You're always constantly busy, staying away from distractions outside world and focusing on teaching, boxing, training, yeah. and drinking coffee. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. Yeah. And, and it's, uh, it, like I said, I love what I do and it, it, it kind of scares me to one day think of, of, of not, you know, comp competing in boxing and, and, and being in the gym and, or being able to lift weights or do stuff like that, because I really, I really love them, and and just blessed to do them every day. Still, so yeah, absolutely, Eric. I want to speak to you about obviously. I know we were all getting excited here in the UK, especially Tyson Fury and Joshua. It looked so close that it was going to take place. Eddie Hearn kind of announced it. Um, Tyson Fury actually announced it and said it's happening, and then all of a sudden talks break down. Now I don't really want to focus on that fight because it's not happening. But the fight that is happening, we're, we're almost what about four weeks away now. The trilogy, Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder. Let's start off first with the press conference that took place about two weeks ago where right. Deontay was different. He's, he's not normally like that. He's normally vocal. He hypes himself up. He's spoken a lot over the last year about the reasons he's lost, the, re the excuses, what he thinks right. has happened. He's made some changes, which we'll come to. But... What, can, what did you make of first Deontay's position on the press conference where he was just totally silent? Well, you know what? First off, I, I can speak from my experiences also as a, a, a many fighters. Actually, I feel like they get, they really, they really show uh, the, the true character after their first loss. Uh, many fighters don't even be able to, are, are not able to bounce back from, from their first loss. Some of them don't ever fight again, you know, so... I think uh, I said this before. I said Deontay Wilder's got 40 wins. I don't know, 39, 40 wins. Give him a chance. Give him a chance to show his real character. I think that's what he's he's earned. He's earned that. Uh, and for people to 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 write him off or say he ain't got a chance, even odd make odd odd makers putting him as a huge underdog. This guy, this guy's got probably one of the hardest punches in boxing history. And I think that uh, we owe him the opportunity to, to, to illustrate how great of a champion he, he can be. So I'm excited about the fight. My wife and, and, my, and I, are, we got our tickets and, you know, I'm looking forward to, 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 him, to him displaying 
the character of a true champion. And, and, I, and so what is it, four weeks away, Brett? You know, obviously, in the first two fights, Tyson Fury, we know he's he's great at mind games. He, we know what he did to Klitschko. We know what he did to Deontay Wilder. Was that also, do you think, a reason why he said, you know what, I'm just not going to get involved in his mind game? Because he had headphones on and obviously couldn't right. hear what Fury was saying. I, I kind of feel like Deontay Wilder's in a place that he's never been before. And so this is unrehearsed. It's, it's raw. And I feel that he's so locked in. You know what I mean? He's so locked in in the uh, in the element of of, uh, of victory, and I think that that he's not interested in none of these games. He's not interested in the talk. He's not interested in replaying or playing these games. And that's kind of like what what I sense in, in some of these uh, uh, videos and and just just just, just kind of looking at. It. I follow him on social media also. He's been very quiet. He's been in a shell, so to speak, since his loss. So. Nobody really knows how losses feel, uh, uh, especially his, his loss. Uh, nobody can really say exactly what's coming because they don't know the type of loss that, that he feels inside his, his body. And uh, I think that it's something that could uh, definitely surprise a lot of people. I like the fact that, that uh, he, did, he made some changes with his training team. I think though that that's going to be a, a great asset to to the game plan is to move forward, and uh, I, I definitely think that he's going to surprise a lot of people in this in this third match. You talk about changes to training team. Most notably, he's he's brought in Malik Scott. Malik's obviously a good friend and a brother to him, and has always been around. Um, but Malik obviously is now head trainer, and right. we've seen clips online. John Tawala you know, on the mitts, more combination punches and looks like he's focusing on other things other than that right hand of his. But what, yeah. do, you, what do you think of Malik coming in? Um, yeah. His I, lack of experience. You know, th this is something that, that I, I speak firsthand about because I've been around Deontay Wilder's team and, and I followed him for years. I fought him. And, and, and I never, honestly, with no disrespect to Mark Breland, but I never really saw any energy coming from him. You know, um, Let's face it, Deontay Wilder's always done the same things. He's thrown the same hard punches. You know, we never really seen him uh, elevate or do anything different in any fight, let's so to speak, right? So um, I think personally that adding Malik Scott and, 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 and making that switch uh, can only be better. It can only be beneficial for him. He's bringing a different uh, element in and he's bringing a different point of view and mindset different knowledge. I think Malik Scott's got a lot of knowledge and I think that he's able to put together certain things. Uh, Tyson Fury is, is very, very, very cagey heavyweight. He's very experienced. You got to come and defeat him with something more than just a big punch or, or a common setup and a big punch. And, and I think that's what that, that's, that, that was Wilder's biggest weakness is that he brought the same thing to the table for the second fight. In order for him to be victorious, he's got to bring something different. And, and that's what Malik Scott is, is doing for him. And, and that's why I feel good about him being victorious because he's going to be able to add that, that new element, that different twist, that new rhythm of, of punch to land. Eric, you've been in the ring with Deontay Wilder. I want you to get your thoughts. Anthony Joshua did an interview with Sky Sports where he said, and I quote, I've never seen a fighter go to war with one weapon his right hand. Top right. level, that doesn't work. As we've seen now, he struggles at top level and there's a lot There's a lot more of us waiting for that opportunity to kick his ass. Right. You know You know what, though? You could have a big weapon. That's fine. In the heavyweight division, Christo Jab, Jab one to his, his way to eight years of destroying. But, but you know, I, I don't see that a problem with Wilder. I think the problem was how he set it up. He's got to come with different rhythm. He's got to come with feints. He's got to come with throwing that right hand in different ways off a slip. Boom. I, I did that punch up to Wardley on my last fight. We worked a little bit of slip and boom. It's the same right hand, but it's just off of just a different type of vision. It could even be a roll this way. and Boom. Uh, just throwing and setting it up differently off different rhythms that Tyson Fury ha has not seen before. Maybe like a feint. Maybe a faint jab, hook, right hand could even be a, a double faint. Uh, these are going to be the, the type of things that he's going to have to do to land that that right hand. 
if he works on these things and becomes fluid with them and, and, and could be and develop really good rhythm and, and, and uh, confidence in them, I could see him landing those shots against Tyson Fury. I, I could see I could see him landing those. Eric, because that right hand's been so successful for him for so many fights and so many knockouts that he's had, when he gets into the ring with Fury, the mindset, does that have to be in the right place? Because if he's struggling with Fury, does his mind does he go back to the old Deontay Wilder and just relies on that right hand? Is, is there a risk of that happening? Yeah, and, and see, and you see that that's really that, that's that that's the whole thing in this is like if he gets in that fight and he loses composure, he's gonna start throwing it like this, where his emotions, his face, his body language, and that's not gonna land on Fury. Fury Fury's a very cagey and he sees all those things and he reacts off of them. So this here is not going to work. It's going to have to be very fluid. It's going to have to be faint, very, very, very cagey. And, and it's going to have to be boom, fast. And, and I think that if he takes away some of that power and just precision, I think that that gives Fury less time to react and prepare. And I think that even though he takes away some of this, just this little pop right here is enough to hurt any heavyweight. And uh, I think that he works on that. I think he did it towards Luis Ortiz. And then when he finished Luis Ortiz, uh, was it the second, the, the last time they fought, he kind of sat back on it. If you notice, he just, he didn't go wild with it. He just moved around and threw it kind of just straight. And it was a different type of shot than we're used to seeing. And it landed, look what it did to Luis Ortiz. So th that's going to that's gonna have to be the type of right hand that, that's going to have to come. It's going to have to be fast, and it's going to have to be uh, very fluid off a different type of rhythm. But it's definitely still a lethal punch that could, that could end the fight. I know we've spoken about John, but also from a Tyson Fury perspective, he's a fighter that needs to be up for the fight as well. He's, he's beaten Deontay in the last fight convincingly. Um, he's, he's, he was very confident that the first fight he won, we know it was a controversial draw. But how much risk is there that Tyson Fury doesn't come in with the right mindset because... He might think it's going to be as easy as the second fight. Um, you know what? He's got his game plan. Also, one thing that, that we that, that I've learned about Tyson Fury is that he's always you got to watch out with him because he's always a, a step or two ahead of like you worried about his gloves. Well, he's got something else. You worried about this? Well, he's two steps ahead of the game, and I think that's why I don't know if it's a tribute to his his team or or him, but. You know, he, 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 when you're worried about something that he's done, he's got something new that he's going to bring to you. So you got to expect that you got to expect the unexpected with him. And, and I think that uh, nobody knows what Tyson Fury is going to bring or how he's going to do it. That, that's what makes him also very dangerous. Also, his game plan, he could tell you that what he's going to do. And he might be telling you exactly what he's going to do, but he might well be planning the opposite so he plays mind games you just got to be ready for anything and and stay focused and and for me it seems like wilder's in that state where he's 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 uh he's locked in and i think he knows exactly what he's got to do to to make sure fury doesn't get up this time what about from a ring rust perspective eric you know both men by the time they get the ring it's going to be nearly 18 months a year and a half it's a long time you would know yeah. that he's been out for a while it's a long time to be out to come into this mega fight. Will that play a factor? You know, obviously that's a long time to, to, to sit back, but just, just depending on the, the mindset and, and the preparation that he goes through, I mean, th there's a lot of factors in this fight, but I think the major factor is, is, is uh, how he's going to react coming off that loss, how he's going to, what type of hunger does he have? And, uh, you know, it's definitely going to be an uphill battle for him. This is, he's not the, he's, he is the underdog in this fight for a reason. And uh, like I said, you know, if he could, if he could come back and win this fight by knockout, then he's just proven to the world that uh, he is one of those greats. He is one of those uh, Muhammad Ali type of, of, of heavyweight Mike Tyson. I think that if he could accomplish this, I think that, uh, he could he could be he could be in the same sentence as those, as those guys, and uh, that that's what all the greats you know you have to find a way to bounce back from from, from losses, and when you do, uh, that that that's what really displays your character and it, and it, and, it, and so that's what this fight 
is going to mean for his legacy. And we're, we're about to see uh, what's going to happen. So with everything that we discuss about the long layoff, the trainer change, the mindset, who is victorious on the night? You know what? I kind of feel that just with the addition of Malik Scott and I see him throwing certain punches in different ways, I think that right hand's going to land. Uh, I think that he's it's going to land in a, in, in a different way that we, we haven't seen it before. And I think that Fury doesn't get up this time. And I think Wilder's going to be a two-time heavyweight world champion that night. Because the right hand lands and Fury doesn't get up. Yeah, I think it's going to be. It could even be the left hook because the left hook kind of did it the first time. It's going to be. It's going to be a different off rhythm type of punch that he's worked on. Could be off a slip. Could be off a dip. I don't know, but it's going to definitely be some type of different rhythm rhythm combination that we haven't seen. That uh, that is going to put Fury down. Eric, another that's fight that, that's going to take place uh, looks like September 25th is the day Anthony Joshua returns against Alexander Usyk, the undisputed right. cruiserweight champion. Um, obviously, we saw him in the ring with Derek Chisora. Uh, yes, he's very, very skillful. We know that as a cruiserweight. But is it a different ball game with the likes of the Joshua, the Fuse, the, the Dylan Whites? The, your, you know yourself as well. You know he's not the biggest heavyweight to mix it with those guys. Yeah, I think that he's definitely going to have, have problems with some of these headways. Joshua's huge. Fast and Fury's massive. Um, I think one of the biggest things that we have not seen from Lucic is forget about the, the size advantage. I think it's more of the, the, the power advantage. Like, I, I, don't, I don't see uh, him hurting these heavyweights. I, I don't see him, you know, really shaking them up. I mean, I've heard stories of him in training and in, in sparring and how he's tough and stuff, but I've yet to see it in the heavyweight fight. Uh, destructive power like you see from other heavyweights and I kind of feel like in order to really compete at the highest level with this heavyweights I think that you definitely need some type of uh, uh, power shot or something to make these guys slow down and, and really think um, but maybe he's just planning to tactically, tactically win uh, 12 round fights uh, he, the, the, it's just a matter of time to see if he's crafty enough to, to, to do so and, and really put off some of these heavyweights for 12 rounds. That, that's the real question. But do you expect Joshua to come through him? I think Joshua should should, should uh, be okay. I think he, he should win a, a decision. I think Usyk's uh, too clever to, to engage enough to really to, to put himself in trouble with, and get himself knocked out. Um, I, I really think, though, that, that one of the biggest things that I see, I'm a big fan of Andy Reese and being the first Mexican heavyweight champ. But... One of the things I saw when he fought Chris Ariola, Chris Ariola is not the best uh, uh, skilled boxer, so to speak, in the heavyweight division. But he was able to keep Andy Reese on the outside. He was able to turn, kind of like pick and choose his shots when he wanted to kind of engage. He, he was able to kind of keep him on the outside, you know, for the most part. So um, it's just one of those things that it was how great was Joshua's performance when he was able to outbox Andy Reese, you know, I, I, I don't know if we can say that that, that was a, a real big performance considering that Ariolo did it himself. And this is not something that he does. So um, maybe he might have trouble with a clever uh, Usyk moving around in there and trying to win off points or trying to just, you know, pick his spots. Um, that, that's an interesting element to that fight also. So I, I personally didn't like... Uh, uh, the fight with Reese and Ariola, I didn't, I didn't like the little transition that I saw from Reese. Maybe it was a weight, maybe it was his style or what. I kind of liked it. I kind of personally li liked Reese bigger, in my, my opinion. I, I liked him bigger. I just bigger presence in front of of uh, of his opponent, and, and I, I just felt that he was a little bit more dangerous. But you know, I don't. Maybe he had an off night or so. But I, I kind of felt Ariola boxed him decently well that night. <laughs> And it was obviously a long time since Ruiz fought, obviously, that last fight coming in, in that defeat to Joshua in, in Saudi Arabia. So he had a long layoff and a lot of body right. transformations as well at the same time. Right. Yeah. And it, it could be a lot of those things where maybe he felt the pressure of, you know, like he was heavy favored in that fight and stuff like that. You know, but um, I don't know. I, I Just my opinion, my opinion, I met, I met him and he's a great individual and I, I'm a big fan. But for me, I like the size on him. I keep the weight on there and, and uh, 
you know, because he's not a big heavyweight. So, I mean, at least be a big presence. Yeah. I think you need to have a big presence in the heavyweight division in the ring, you know. So, but I wish him the best, and, and, and he's definitely a, a great champion. Also, I know he'll bounce back and continue to move forward, and and uh, it, and uh, I wish him the best. Absolutely. Okay. All right, Eric. Thank you so much for 15, 20 minutes of your time today. I appreciate it. I'm sure we'll catch up in a couple of weeks because I will hit you up because a lot more will happen with Wilder Fury. Uh, and as the, as the fight gets close, I'm sure we'll, we'll catch up and, and get you yeah, some more insight into, into the fight. Yeah, you got it, man. Are you planning on going down there to, to the fight? Or? At the moment, um, there's restrictions. So okay. if you haven't got a waiver from uh, America... If you didn't get it in time, sometime last year, <clears throat> um, they're not allowing any new entries into the country. So that's with everybody. So over the last oh. few months, we've had a lot of fights. We are, and unfortunately, we're not allowed to travel. Wow. But let's hope COVID can disappear for good so we can go back to normality. Wow. Man, well, hopefully things uh, head for the right direction down there, man. And, and we continue to move past this. And you stay safe down there, brother. Take absolutely, care, man. Absolutely. Eric Molina, IFL TV, thank you very much.